Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here with the Vladivostok or the Vladivostok second impressions video. Alright, so I've played this ship quite some time since the first impressions video. Um, I know it's only been a couple of days, but trust me, I played it all night last night. You guys that were there on the stream, I mostly played that. And we had a good time on the stream last night playing the Vlad. Now the Vlad, um some things I said in my first impressions video was that I found it was a little squishy and it could really use another heal um, because it is it does have a lot of hit points but it does just have this humongous bow section that for some reason it's there and to me it doesn't seem to serve any f type of functional purpose um, I mean if they had another turret there and have a four a four turret battleship at tier eight that would have been great um, <laughs> But no, it just has this humongous bow that eats HG, eats torpedoes, inhibits your ability to peek around corners. So that's a huge downside to it. And I still do think it needs another heal because if you have superintendent and premium consumables, you can only have four heals. And it's not like these heals are super heals or anything. They're not. They're they're decent heals if you use the flag. But other than that, they're just normal run-of-the-mill battleship heals. They're they're not. They're not super special or anything to my knowledge so far, and they certainly don't feel super special because I still feel pretty squishy in this ship in certain situations. Another thing that is very unique about the battle, the Russian battleships is that they have a limited damage control consumable. You only get five with Superintendent and Premium consumables. Now, they do recharge insanely fast for damage con, but you only have five of them. And... Usually I don't run out if I have five. Um, I do, I mean, you guys have seen me. I hold my damage cons incredibly long. Um, if you're not on fire in three places and you're over half health, don't use damage con. Just let the thing burn and heal that in, or pop a heal because you do only have five and you can get seriously screwed if you're out of damage con and you get a flood or a fire. So make sure you hold on to those. That's my tip to, to handle that. Now, having these damage cons that you can burn off just like, like that, it is beneficial to you when you get in a, a pretty uh, dicey fight. Now, the thing about the guns on the Vlad and other Russian battleships is that a, from about 13 kilometers out, they are not all that accurate. 13 kilometers in, though, they are extremely accurate and their dispersion is very nice. Um, if you're fighting at something from 13 kilometers in, you definitely have the advantage. Even against destroyers, because of the shortness of range that some of these destroyers like to engage you from, you know, 9 kilometers, 10 kilometers, you know, sometimes just within their torpedo range, you can absolutely blop them out of existence like you used to before the AP changes because their guns are incredibly accurate that close in. Now I know at the start of the video you, you guys saw me blap that gearing but he was already kind of at half health. Don't worry I've destroyed downright sla slaughtered almost full health destroyers with the Vlad because just every single shell hits. It is ungodly satisfying and it's great. 
so you definitely have the advantage from that range in. Now, of course, they still, they still have torpedoes, but unlike most situations, you can at least take them with you when this happens. Or you can catch them off guard because the Vlad also has a 12 kilometer detection range if you have the, consume, the captain skill and the module. So it's not uncommon for you to catch people with their pants down from 12, 13 kilometers in, which is your sweet spot. And you guys saw that at the start of the video, I was surprised that Gearing and that Yemi, unfortunately the Yemi didn't escape, but I did also ram the Mosfa and, you know, laugh. I did have the, the, um, the ramming flag on, it's not like the ship can, it, that'd be really cool because you have this ungodly long bow, the ship can get a better, um, damage trade with ramming, but unfortunately it does not. So anyway, when you are close in and you're fighting multiple ships at once, you can get it to where you can bounce the damage con and the repair back and forth to where you can survive for quite some time under fire from multiple ships. Much longer than you have any business surviving um, for that long against, you know, I've gone against up against four ships in this thing, just bouncing my, my heal and my um, damage con back and forth. And I lived way longer than I should. Granted, it was a bunch of tier 7 ships, but still, four ships against one, that that's nothing to just dismiss like that. The ship is great at close range, and I mean close range. Like, 10 kilometers in, you have every advantage except the secondary advantage. The secondaries on this ship are pretty meh. They're out to about 5.8 kilometers right now. I don't think they're really worth building into when I build up this captain some more and get him, get a, I may just throw a BFT and AFT on there just to see how it works and go with the secondary module just to see how it works. I'm still using the same captain setup that I did in the first impressions video. So not really worth building the secondaries. AA isn't all that great either. Um, I did shoot down 25 planes in a game but that was because the carrier just wanted to kill me that bad. I don't know if I dishonored his family or something but he really wanted my bacon and he kept coming after me. So you know it it's okay. It's not terrible. It's not fantastic. You're definitely going to be relying on your fighter plane consumable more so than your AA. But what ship doesn't nowadays that isn't an, an AA ship? That isn't an American battleship or an American cruiser or a British cruiser? So it's just meh, middle of the road ish there. Um, speed is also pretty nice to get up to 29 knots without the flag. And I'm not sure, but I think this battleship has a much better stopping uh, rate than other battleships. I'm not sure. It certainly feels like it from what I've played so far. It feels like the ship stops really, really fast, which has got me out of a lot of sticky situ situations with torpedoes. And she is quite maneuverable. She has a 13 second rudder shift time. While that's not vanguard levels of maneuverable, that is pretty dang maneuverable for a battleship. You got uh, Bismarck, I believe he's around uh, 16 seconds. So that's what I was really comparing to the other tier 8 brawler. So that's pretty dang good. And that's without any uh, maneuverability modules or anything on it. Now the drawbacks of the ship are the gun reload time. It's 33 seconds. Honestly, that's a bit long in my opinion for a reload time on 16 inch guns at tier 8. NorCal, 30 seconds flat. Amagi has bigger guns, 30 seconds flat. It really has no reason to be 30 second, uh, 33 seconds. Heck, I'd be happy with 31 or 32, but 33, that just feels a bit long. And add that to a 45 second base uh, 180 time on the turrets. That That is very, very long. Um, you know, I'd say, you know, if you don't want to change both of them, you know, at least put one to either 30 seconds flat or a little bit faster rudder uh, turret, turret traverse time and leave the other. So if they change the turret traverse time, leave the reload at 33 seconds. They change the, the um, reload time, leave the 180 time at 45 seconds. And uh, apart from the giant nose, that's really the only big downsides I see to this ship. I don't see the, the limited damage con as a downside as in those really tight situations it is extremely, extremely useful. And plus, it will train a lot of people to hold their damage con, which you really do need to be doing anyway. Um, other than that, and the... Oh, the heal. I, I did mention this already at the front. But I really do feel like it needs another heal. It needs five heals. Um, because it's so easy to burn this thing down with HE. I mean, I get it has a bigger hit pull. 
but it has so much just useless space in that bow. It's, you know, and it's just kind of silly the way that the ship's designed with the huge bow and that you don't get any more hills. You only get four hills and you don't get like a super hill or anything. It's a normal hill. It's just, they just really need to give it another hill in my opinion. Um, but I've been having a blast in this ship so far. Um, you guys did one stream with me last night. We had a ton of fun in it. You can get into some downright goofy situations with this thing and sometimes come out on top. Well, not sometimes. If you're on, if you're used to brawling, you'll do great in this thing. You play it pretty much just like a German, except you don't. You can't rely on your secondaries. You just have to definitely pre-position your guns even more so now. And if you know where to aim, you can absolutely wreck ships at close range with this thing. Uh, from six kilometers away, it's almost like there's no dispersion on the guns, which is a huge plus for those of us that like to like that like to get nice and close. Now, granted, oh, and also the the range on the guns, it's only 18 kilometers, but you ain't hitting jack at that range anyway. <laughs> um, so that is another downside, but it's not like you can just hit, you can hit anything from uh, over 16 kilometers away. But the Germans are like that too, so not a huge deal in my book. So in the current meta of the carrier rework, it is going to be annoying when you get up tiered in this ship because tier 10 carriers, this thing's candy to them. And tier 10 games in general, if it's a, if it's a tier 10 game with mostly tier 10s in it, not like one of those mix where it's just you know you got a bunch of tier 8s and a, and a few tier 10s, you'll you, you'll do okay on that and there and those. If it's a straight up tier 10 game, you're gonna have a bad day. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. You're gonna have a bad day. That's the bottom line there. So, so far, I do enjoy this ship. I am having fun in this ship. Should you spend a bunch of money trying to get containers to get this ship? No, don't do that. You know, just earn the containers the normal way. Or may don't, don't spend more than 20 bucks trying to earn this ship. Because, bottom line, this is a tech ship. You'll be able to get it in the, I think, not, I think the next update. Or the update after that's when they're releasing the full line. And you'll be able to get it then. So, no need to waste a bunch of money. Um getting the ship because I did have to buy two sets of the of the 25 containers that's $200 I can do that because you guys watch the channel and I can put that money that I get from the ad revenue back into the channel so I can review ships like this and the rest of the early access Soviet battleships which I will be doing so again thank you guys for that and yeah I hope this video helped you decide on whether or not you want to try to get the ship early or you know you'll save up free XP to get to the ship once the line releases so guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button, and make sure you join the Discord, link is in the description down below. Okay, for all you guys that have stayed to the end, I have a treat for you. We were donated a Dreadnought for me to give away to you guys, and for this Dreadnought giveaway, Dreadnought's a Tier 3 Premium British Battleship, if you want to know more about it, go watch my first impressions video on it, and... If it looks good to you, here's how I'm going to select the winner of this Dreadnought. Simply make me laugh in the comments down below. Your best joke about Russian battleships. Go. I'll select the one that makes me less that make me that makes me laugh hardest. I'll leave this up for I think I don't know a week or so, um, and we'll see who wins it. Just make me laugh. That's all you gotta do. All right, guys. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. I'll catch you guys in the next one.